Last time, I showed you how to design this resource graph to show how your supplies were holding up in your factory. This time, I thought I'd take things to the next level and show some alternative designs, some of which could be quite useful and some of which are just there because I can. <laughs> I'll be referring to this basic lamp-based design quite a lot during this video, so I strongly recommend you watch the previous video first. Welcome to Lawrence Blaze Factorio. While I was making the last video, I saw a post on Reddit where someone had made a very similar graph, but they used train signals instead of lights. This is set up in exactly the same way as my other graph, with Y values incremented in tens as you go up the left hand side, and with the percentage of capacity fed in from the bottom as an X value. The difference is that these cables are then connected to signals instead of lamps. If we look at the settings for one of these signals, you can see that you can specify when you want the signal to close, that is, to go red. I've set it to do that if X is less than Y, meaning that as we fill the supply up, the lights will go green one at a time, and you can see that as the quantity of stone increases, the signals start to go green. This is very similar to the version with the lamps, except it's a lot harder to see, there's some ugly pieces of rail getting in the way, it takes up a lot more space, and you only have two colours to play with. Not great. But the thing that makes this interesting is that you can see it in the map view. If I bring up the map and make sure rail signal states is turned on over on the right, you can see the blobs from the signals showing their current state. This means you don't need to zoom in on that specific area, you can see your supply levels at a glance from an overview. You can also add a tag on the map like this to show what a column refers to, but unfortunately the tag is rather large, so you'd have to spread the bars quite a long way apart to use them. This graph can be expanded in exactly the same way as the simpler one was. However, because signals don't need power, you don't need to leave gaps for substations, you can just run power along the bottom for the combinators, and for speakers if you want to use them. You can even have both designs next to each other running off the same signals, so you've got a pretty view for up close, and a quick reference for the map view. Over here, I've made another grid using the same system, with the bars a little bit more widely spaced, and this allows me to use belts to write the names of the resources under them for easy reference from map view. And I've also offset the letters a little bit to make it easier to read them. Having the text vertical like this allows the bars to be put a bit closer together than if, they were than if they were placed horizontally, because the letters are much thinner than they are tall. Of course, removing the letters completely would allow you to fit twice as many bars into the same space, so it's up to you which you'd rather do. The next design is loosely related in that it uses trains as well, but it's quite a lot sillier. <laughs> it looks like a bit of a mess from here, but let's take a closer look. Each vertical rail forms the background of one of the bars for the charts, with the position of the train showing how full that bar is. Again, I've got Y numbers up the left, but this time I'm just adding one each time. This is because I need to make sure that only one station is active at a time, so I need to trigger them when X equals Y, rather than using greater or less than. And so, I've set the divisors at the bottom to give me numbers between 1 and 20, and then set each station in the column to enable when X equals Y. The stations are all named after that column's resource, and the train for a resource is set to go to the station with the appropriate name, and then immediately go to the same station name again. This means that as the amount of a resource increases, different stations will activate and the train will move up the line. If the resource goes down, the train will run round the loop and then come back up from the bottom. This means that as you drain a supply, the train will do a lot of moving, but in a reasonably stable factory, this shouldn't be unmanageable. I will admit that on the normal view, this looks pretty chaotic. There's a horrible tangle of cables and stations, and whilst there's clearly some trains in there, it's not exactly a nice display. But when we go over to the map view, it makes a lot more sense. The trains become much more visible, and if I zoom out a bit further, the stations all blur together, turning it into quite a nice display. Again, I could put text above the bars to help identify each resource if I wanted to. I deliberately made the trains quite long in order to ensure that the bars would be solid all the way down, but this does mean there needs to be quite a lot of track below the graph, which in turn means it takes a bit longer for the trains to whip round the loop. Perhaps having just one or two locomotives and no wagons would be better. Also note that I haven't added any infrastructure for refuelling the trains. This design has literally no space available for that, but the trains don't move enormous distances and I filled them up with nuclear fuel, so they should last for a while. My next design is based on an idea that Mark gave me, using a system similar to his sushi belts to control the quantity of resources on a belt. Here, up to 50 pieces of the resource are added to the belt, giving a live indication of the supply of that resource. 
Since I'm using the resource itself on the belt, no labelling is required, although it does make it a little more time consuming to set up. The basic idea behind this graph is fairly straightforward, but let's build one out to show how it works. I'll start by building up the belt, the chest and the inserters, since that part's simple. Then, we divide the quantity of the resource we're interested in by an appropriate number to convert it into an X value between 1 and 50, the number of items we want to have on the belt. Now, I can add another arithmetic combinator here and set it to add 0 to everything, that is, just pass quantities straight through. If I link the output back to the input, this makes a memory cell, a component which will remember a number for me. Then I can wire it into pieces of belt at the top and bottom of the bar and set those to send pulses to this memory cell whenever an item passes them. The top one is fed in directly, the bottom one is negated by an arithmetic combinator. Causing the memory cell to increment when an item enters and decrement when it leaves. Now I just need to control how many items are in there, so I hook the previous pieces of belt up to the memory cell signal and to the X signal. Comparing these tells the belt when it should run. Add more items if plastic is less than X. Remove items if plastic is greater than X. This means that as resources are added or removed from storage, items will be added or removed from this belt to keep the representation at the right level, like this. Do note that you need to use different colours of cable to bring in the resource signal and the X signal, otherwise your memory cell will start trying to store the resource signal as well and things will go very strange. This graph works very nicely, but do be careful when you're fiddling with it. It's very easy to get the system out of sync with itself, so it's no longer quite sure how many items are in the middle. I could cover the whole centre part with belt readers, but that would spoil the look of it. So, whilst this system is slightly more fragile, it is a much nicer design. So, what should we do next? Well, let's go back to the original graph for the moment, but slightly more spread out. Having these bars is great for a rough impression of the resource availability, but what if I wanted something a little more precise? Maybe percentage readouts, like this. The graph has been built in exactly the same way as the original one, so I won't go into any details about how that works, but I've then got the green cable, which contains an X value between 0 and 100, plus the colour signal connected out into the display. This green cable is then connected to all of the lamps to ensure that the colour gets set, and also for the initial 1, the lamps are set to turn on if X equals 100, as that's the only number which requires the third digit. The other two digits are a little more complicated. There are a number of ways to make displays like this in Factorio, and I've gone for probably the simplest. Over here on the right, there are 10 sets of constant combinators hooked up to decider combinators. Each constant combinator contains a selection of letters, with each letter corresponding to the lights in a segment of the digits display. For example, 1 requires B and C to be turned on, which represent the two halves of the vertical line down the right-hand side of the digit. The 1 for 8 contains all 7 letters, A to G. The decider combinator passes the appropriate letters through if the correct number signal is fed in, so if it sees a 1, it passes through the signals from combinator 1, that is the B and the C. Then each light is set to turn on if it sees its letter on the signal. This makes sense and is nice and straightforward for numbers from 0 to 9, but we're going to be going a bit higher than that, which is what these arithmetic combinators in the middle are for. For the numbers on the left, we divide x by 10, and since Factorio deals with integers on the uh, circuit network, remainders are discarded. So, 82 divided by 10 equals 8. This is then used to check which segments to turn on. For the right side, we use the percent, or modulo, calculation, which does the division and then gives us the remainder instead. So, 82 modulo 10 equals 2. This is then used to select the segments for the right digit. The two aren't actually connected. These wires go over the top of all of the combinators without touching. Finally, there's a special case option which says that if the dot equals 10, then to pass through the same segments as if it were a zero. This is a special case when the total is equal to 100. There are other ways to do this sort of display. I could use a series of deciders for each segment, for example saying to turn on the upper left segment if the value is 4, 5, 6, 8, 9 or 0. However, I think this would require a lot more combinators. I could make my numbers out of more segments, which with my design wouldn't require anything more than putting some extra letters in the constant combinators and then changing around the triggers on the lamps. This would allow me to improve the font slightly and make it a bit more readable. 
I did also see another design for the circuitry on the Factorio forums, which I've linked in the description. This used far fewer combinators and some clever maths to select which light should activate. This would need me to do a lot more thinking, however, um, because I like to implement my own systems rather than just borrowing other people's blueprints. Another fun possibility is to combine this display with the first idea from this video and make a seven segment display that can be seen from the map view. Again we use signals, but now we tell them to trigger based on the A to G letters, going red if they don't see their letter, since green is brighter and then gives a much better contrast as an ON colour. With this larger version, I reckon you could easily fit the combinators inside the numbers, making the thing a little bit more compact, and you could run signals around the outside of the numbers as well, making them double thickness for even easier reading on the map view, and I think like this, this looks pretty good. I do have a couple more ideas for even more complicated graphs that I might show in a future video, but for the time being, what do you think of these designs? Do any of them actually look useful? Would you like to build them? Do you have any other suggestions for displays like this? Let me know in the comments and on the Discord server, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss whatever convoluted concoction I produce next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching.